All right, if you got a 100 series and it uh, makes a noise like it's kind of popping out of gear when you're going down the highway, um, there's a good chance you may have a torque converter lockout solenoid uh, going out. It's uh, sound a little bit something like... Yeah, like that. So uh, I'm going to show you the fix for it. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's not terribly expensive if you do it yourself. It is rather expensive if you take and have it done. So hopefully uh, this video can help uh, save you a dollar or two. Here we go. All right, so after you pull the dipstick tube up out of, uh, or the dipstick up out of the tube slightly, you can just leave it across the motor. You don't have to take it all the way out. Um, you're going to want to come down here and drain the tranny pan. Normally, you uh, probably need a 14 millimeter wrench, but you got really great hand strength, so uh, yeah. Or we already drained this one for the video. So you'll drain it out. Um, there's still going to be quite a bit of fluid in there, in both the pan and the filter, which you'll see in a minute. Um, we did all the struggling off camera on this one just because it's an instructional video, not a uh, not suitable for work swearing video. So you, you drain out the fluid knowing there's going to be quite a bit left in there. And you'll take out all these 10 mils. This back 10 millimeters back here, take a uh, quarter inch drive wrench and an extension. They're a little bit of a pain to get to, but generally not too terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and finish taking out the last few bolts here. Now, take special note, up here there's a, a dipstick is slid into a tube here. It's a O-ring seal. So you, uh, you will have to be mindful of that when you pop it off. But yours ain't going to fall off like mine. I mean, in a world where you're happy it would, but it doesn't. It's quite a fight. But if you take a tapered... Uh, pry bar you can come up here and you can grab right here and you can pry down on both sides and uh, it, it will pop loose you're probably going to think you're breaking stuff but it pops loose and uh, you may have to dolly it back out a little bit like I did to straighten it but um, once it pops down it'll pop this tube out point out here these magnets we've already cleaned up you'll have four magnets in here you need to clean them up they go back we'll talk about gasket scraping later it's something i do want to point out um all right let's go back up top all right so to take off the the filter um now this is full of fluid when you pop this off it's gonna you'll enjoy so these are all 10 millimeters like the pan i've had these out previously not, not a big deal on the front ones, they're the same. However, on the back ones, your rear one is slightly longer, so you are going to want to pay attention where you take this out from. So, um, what we're doing right now is we're doing the shift lock solenoid in this particular rip apart, and that would be this one right up here. Uh, it'd be nice if it was one of the easy ones to get to, but it's not. Um, so, one of the first things you're going to have to do after you clean up all the tranny fluid dripping, which you'll be enjoying that already, you just pop out some of these clips them out of your way so you can drop the valve body. This one's a bit of a pain. You have to kind of push it in and move it up. The other ones are a little, a little more primitive and simple. All right, and after you get your wires out of the way, um, we're gonna drop the valve body. There's quite a bit of bolts have to be removed. Uh, they're all 10 millimeter. I'll throw up a picture to show you which ones they are. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get those loosened up and I'll show you how to drop it down and pop out the solenoid. All right, so we're gonna do the rest of the, the sw swapping out the solenoid on the floor because obviously it's easiest. Um, but I do want to point out a couple things. You'll have a couple springs fall out and probably make you panic. You'll have this little uh, shut off detent. Just so you have an idea where they go, the springs go inside of each other, they'll sit here. This little detent actually goes up in the transmission, but there's a adjoining hole right there. So it gives you location on the parts that fall out and make you panic. All right, so eight millimeter is just one. I might put the torque specs in, I might not. I don't like being liable for stuff, but I am trying to help some folks out, so. And there's our villain. One thing I always like to do is compare parts, just make sure you got the right thing. I actually ordered this from Toyota directly, of course, so. Um, make sure you get the right thing, but it, it matches. There's some stamped numbers on there. Uh, they don't match, so we won't talk about it. We'll just pretend like they match. It's no biggie. A 
Okay, now I'll tighten this back down, torque it to spec, and uh, it'll be the reverse, which will take some pictures and video of putting it back together. I tried to use the Vaseline trick on this detent, which I'll explain when I'm not trying to hold my tongue in a particular location. Vaseline is petroleum based, oops, so it works pretty well to hold little things like ball valves and stuff in place. Okay. All right, so um, we had to stop recording for a second so Kyler could help hold these springs, which you can see right there. Well, I got it up and held this side because my little Vaseline didn't, trick didn't hold it very well. Um, but anyway, so then we put a couple bolts in. This one here, uh, this one here, this one here. It's never going to go through them. Now, keep try I'm going to try to make a, a picture for it, but there, there are specific, both specific links in different spots. Uh, I'll put up a diagram. Uh, this one here has a small bracket which retains your wires on there. Be sure the uh, bracket sits thusly, as you can see. It points toward the front of the vehicle, so it, it heads toward the front of the vehicle, which is this direction. Go sit there. Okay. All right, so we're going to hook these wires back up. Um, I do want to point out that uh, this is a very messy job. The quicker picker upper has been on hand a lot here, but um, it looks like it's not that messy because we're taking that part out. So if you think maybe you're doing it wrong because you're puking transmission fluid everywhere and it looks like a murder scene, you're doing it right. We just took that part out. All right, so put the filter back in. It's, uh, this is pretty simple, but don't forget your longer bolt goes to the rear on your black bolts over here. Again, rewind and look back at the diagram if you don't remember what I'm talking about. Um, this filter I did clean. I uh, put it in the parts washer. Uh, I clean, it's the screen, but it is the filter. So I cleaned it all up. If you're already in here, I recommend cleaning up what you can. You're gonna notice a bunch of like black varnish and whatnot. And uh, all right, I might throw the torque spec for this up too, or I might just say something like four or Gadugas, but uh, we'll get that done. So your filter's about back on. We're about ready to uh, goop up the pan throw it back together and uh, fill it with tranny fluid and, uh, and drive a Land Cruiser. All right, got it all buttoned back up. Um, got a, all of our solenoids plugged back in. These bolts torque down to the proper torque spec. All your valve body bolts torque down. Don't forget you got little rubber, or you got little protectors on here. Uh, make sure they're kind of in the right spot. This one, it's got a protector that goes over that solenoid. The sleeve goes here, back in your clip. You don't want any, <clears throat> anything hanging down loose there. So well, we're ready to start sticking them back together. So before we put some silicone on here, um, I just want to point out that you can see, I don't get this perfectly clean. Uh, it is a pain to do, but it is important to prep right. Uh, I use uh, green scratch bright pads and uh, WD-40 to clean it all up and get it prepped. I clean off all my magnets and stuff. Uh, you should do the same. Take the time while you're in here, you got it off, get all the debris out, get your magnets cleaned up, get this down to sealing surface. If you can get close here, you'll see there's actually a raised area. That's where your silicone is going to go. So I'm going to run silicone down this around all the holes. Uh, the point here is to not overdo this. It says, I think about two mils thick. So we're going to put a little layer, take your time. I'm actually a little too thick right there. I do this, it's not really required. I just do it for general good practice, but I spray a little bit of silicone spray down here because this is where the O-ring seals for the dipstick tube. I like to go in smoothly and not give me a problem. All right. All right, so we're gonna line up the little dipstick tube first. So we're gonna try to get this stabbed in right on the silicone so it's not making a mess. Dipstick, dipstick tube makes it a bit of a challenge. I think I said dipstick. There she goes, right like so. And we put in a bazillion bolts. It's my preferred method of starting them. Some people probably tell me starting for the wind but I won't do it. Um, I tighten a few of these down by hand on each side. 
so I can get my silicone up intact and set so it's not sliding around and moving because we want a good seal. Then just go around and slowly stick the other ones in. I'll try to remember to throw up a torque spec for these two. We had this, uh, we're not topping it off with fluid, we're just filling it because it's, uh, it's empty and we lost fluid out of the valve body and whatnot. So uh, once I get this dumped in, uh, remember you need type T4 or better for these, um, or the equivalent. So I'm gonna put in a few quarts to get oil back in the pan, then for normal filling protocol, get up to operating temperature and we will uh, top it off the normal way here in a minute. Well, that's it. Should be good as new.